Okay, so the next step is, this is all quilted, sewn together, edge stitched everywhere. Now these sides are going to turn under four centimeters from each side. But when you turn them in, you need to make sure that the distance between here and here is exactly the same so that when you fold it up, it'll be even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure down four centimeters from here and put a mark and four centimeters from here and put a mark. Do not iron on this pen, by the way. And then I'm going to press here. Oh, I'm going to clip it first because I use my clips for everything. This is much easier if you clip it. Clip and clip. And then you turn this up making sure this distance and this distance is exactly the same. This distance, this distance and this distance. Oh gosh, it's not that far. Is exactly the same. So I just clip it and then I measure it. So, across here is 15 centimetres. This needs to be 15 centimetres, nowhere near. So I need to pull this in and make sure that this is 15 centimetres. Then I need to pretend I'm folding it up here and here and make sure that when it folds up, it's going to be the same width, okay? So I think I need to come in there a little bit. There, I'll give it a little press on the ends. And you can just do this. Perfect. And that one could come in just a tad. So now I'll just give it a light press. I do not press on that mark, by the way. I'll just press on this end just to hold it, but not near that mark because otherwise it won't come off. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be top stitching on this side. So I can leave the pink um, thread underneath. Perfect, I don't need to do any more. So now I'm top stitching on here. So I've got my thread out to the side. I'm putting my foot down. I've left it on my um, edge stitch foot and my needle position to the left and my stitch length long. It's on 2.9 and back stitch and sew down all the way to the end and back stitch so you can see it's a good fun way to use up your scraps oops back stitch at the end not there oh what happened here hmm my thread I mustn't have gone right in underneath I can see here see that now I wouldn't just put that under there if that ever happened, so it's come out of here. I would actually undo that and redo it so that it seats properly in my tension unit. So I would not just thread that and carry on starting because I wouldn't want it to do anything weird while I was sewing. So I will check that I've got it right under there this time. There, there and there and then let that go. So that's very rare for that to do that but it did so it's good for you to see so don't just thread it through there and think oh that's fine just make sure it's in properly um, please um, clean and oil your machines regu regularly if you hear any funny noises on your machine or if it starts jamming up your thread it'll be thirsty machines like to be looked after just like we need a drink of water the machines need the oil and please only use the Benina oil provided with your machine or come and buy the right one if you've run out. Um, it's not good for your machine to use any other oil. So see with my thread here, you won't get any jam ups. So to the bottom, very pretty threads. These are the um, sulky threads. They're very, very pretty. Um, use your cutter if you want to, but wait till your foot lifts up. Look at that, no hands. And then pull it out and you end up with two little tails of thread like that, that you can cut straight off. And I'll cut these ones off. And there we have our pouch. Now, because you could leave it like that, but 
what happens is if you stitch it up it's going to stay as a pouch and your glasses won't fall out so here's what we we do what we've decided we do <laughs> is we bring up our base and it's about that distance will be perfect we bring up our base we bring our sides together we bring the inside piece together and put a little clip like this so it's a soft pull up you want to make a little bit of room for your glasses it's not tight okay then you can try your glasses make sure you're happy with the they're perfect for those glasses and here and here I'm going to do my tailor tacking on my sewing machine so the tailor tacking is just dropping my feed dogs down I'll bring that a bit there a little bit more room it needed there um, bringing my feed dogs down um, and using stitch number 60 so stitch number 60 is my sew on button stitch and I will use because I haven't got a buttonhole foot because I sold it <laughs> oh no 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 I have got one I sold the shop one so this is how you sew on a button so I'll just use that foot or you could use the darning foot to do two bar tacks both sides to hold that okay so foot number 18 I will tell the machine I've got foot number 18 on number 18 there we go I can leave my feed dogs up for this actually because it doesn't matter and what I do and I will move this to show you is working on one of these tables it's much easier if you just pop this out so that you can get your work under here you see because I need my work under here so all I'm doing is bringing my work up to my foot and getting my thread underneath my foot there and all I do is let the machine do the work so what it's doing is it's going to lock off to the left it's going to bar tack one moment I need to bring my bobbin thread up I need bobbin thread for this one up <laughs> Look at my little tiny tail. Can I get it? I can't because I haven't got enough fingers. I need that little tiny tail there. Longer. Thank you for this job. Now I'm going to push pattern begin because I want that to start again. Okay, so take two. So remember, bring it under. Put your work there. Got your thread. And you're just doing a bar tack. So lock, bar tack, lock, bar tack, lock, bar tack, lock. And the machine stops itself. Okay, so I'm going to show you that again. Pull it back. Cut your thread. Come over to your next side. Put your work in. And... Bring it up, start, lock, bar tack, lock, bar tack, lock, bar tack, lock. And it stops. So I do use that for other things than sewing on buttons. And there I have got a really, really easy method of sewing bar tacks. Okay. Now what I want to do is choose studs. So I could use the hammer-on studs or I could use my um, plastic studs that are very, very, very hard to ever pull out. So I'm going to use those this time. And with the studs, when you buy them online, these plastic studs, you get a tool with them so you don't have to use a hammer. And they look like this. Here. 
and they come with this and they come with an awl. I don't really need to use an awl for this because it's not very thick. So I'm going to choose um, maybe this colour I might use. And so with all studs you have male and female bits. So you have your top which looks like this and you have your oops, don't know what that's doing. You have your base that looks like this here. Okay, so what I do is I bring this over and decide if I want one or two. I might just do one on this one. Find my centre and put a mark and put my lid back on. Push my stud through. There's my mark there. Is that too far up? I'm going to put it down closer to the end. Push my stud through. Make sure the stud is all the way through. And then put your other piece on. And all you do with this wonderful tool is you simply put your stud onto the base and you squeeze it. And it's not a hard squeeze. And there you have your little stud and it does not come off. Now what I want to do is I want to find the other end of the stud, which is that one there. Yep. Now I need to mark where I want it to go. So bring this down and it's going to go on to, just make sure I've got that right onto there. And about there. There's my little mark. Great measuring. And so this time, this one goes up underneath. So I'm pushing this one. So the top and the bottom are the same, but they just go the opposite places. It's quite good when you don't actually need to use your awl because it's not that thick. Saying that, I'm going through wadding and everything, but it's still um, not too hard. Or maybe I do need it. Oh no, I can feel it. It's coming through. I thought my oil all was in there, but it's actually the um, screwdriver, so that's why I'm not using it. There we go. There's my piece through, and this time I want to put the other part of my stud in there. And then bring this on here. Make sure you leave that in the right place. Wouldn't be very good if you didn't have it on the right place. There we go. And bring that on. And there we go. And that is how you use the studs. They are brilliant. They're so good. And there you have just need to give that a press but that's cute they're really cute so it's quite fun actually I quite like the finished result of that you wouldn't even know you had grey on there unless you turned it over so the other thing I thought of when I was doing these you could actually leave them just like this put a little hook on them put them on your wall and put your glasses in them so you always knew where your glasses were so that was the other thing I thought so you could do all sorts of things but I like them when they're just hooked up here and here so that your glasses go in there and they don't come out. So I think they're a great idea. So that's just a fun little idea I thought you'd like. In the notes, I have given you another amazing bag that I'm really liking. And this bag is a, it can be a toilet bag. It can be a work bag. Um, it can be whatever you like bag. So this is it here. And again, I've used the K-Facet fabric and self-binding. And the pattern is um, over here. There it is here. And it's from She Can Sew. So this is how the pattern comes like this. And what you need is a full-size pattern and... If you get the other half and you join that together, that is what your pattern looks like when it's done, okay? 
So this bag is a bag where um, it's got a lot of room in it. So if I wanted it for a toilet bag, I could put the little small shampoos all lined up across there, or I could use it for my threads, or I could use it for my sewing goods, but there's a lot of room in the pouches. Now the idea of this bag is it has clear glass so you can see what's in it, but I had a little bit of netting, so I put a bit of netting in mine, but you can see there's room all the way up here as well. So I've given you the pattern for this, and the pattern is um, just downloadable, obviously. And what you actually do is you quilt the whole outside of your fabric and the inside of your fabric together. So this is one big long piece of fabric and I've quilted it together. Then I've cut the shape out of my bag and all you do is you bring your pieces together. Oh, by the way, by the way, this is soft and stable. It only works with soft and stable because it is such a good product to um, use because your bag keeps its shape. So with this bag, I've decided it's going to be a toilet bag. So the instructions are telling you to sew the bag like this, which is fine. But I've decided that I'm going to... And I'm not going to do it because um, you've got the instructions. But I've decided that I'm going to make my lining and stitch my lining exactly the same and put it on the inside of this before I do my next part, which will be the plastic. And then I know that it's fully washable, wipeable, if I use it as a toilet bag. So instead of putting the lining on now, I'm putting it in separately so I can take it, pull it out of my bag a little bit and wipe it. So I'm making two outers, one out of the wadding and one out of the plastic. And then I'll just stitch this and show you just for a second. I'm not going to actually do this, but I'm just going to stitch this and I'll just show you what I mean. Because you might like to do this also when you make these. So I'll just stitch this together. Um, stitch number one. Got my thread. And quarter inch foot. Now the funny thing about this is there's something I think it will make it neater. So on the instructions, it says to stitch this, and then it says that um, you can just zigzag in here, but you actually do see this on the inside of your bag if you look really hard. <laughs> so I think this would be much nicer if you um, actually... Here's my 1D foot. I think it would be much nicer if you actually sat and stitched it. 1D. So I'm not putting my, um, just hold my thread. Oop. Put it on to satin stitch is a perfect thing to do when I've told you to do that. So put it on to satin, satin stitch nice and wide. This is what I think I will do on mine to make it look nicer on the inside, even though I'm the only one that's going to see it. I just think you might as well make it look nice. I've got a little bit of fabric pulling up there. I'm just going to tuck it under my foot. There we are. So they just say to um, zigzag it, but I think satin stitching is so much prettier. notice I'm waiting. See, I think I'd do that on mine next time. Anyway, the reason being, when you turn it through, like now, like this is your bag, you actually do see that seam inside, 
and because I'm going to be lining it with my plastic and I'm going to sew that all together now before I do my next stage then this can all be wipeable okay so when you do, if you want to make it and you download it I think that would be the way to go so I'm not doing it it's not my pattern but I just wanted to show you it because I think it's fabulous and the new K facet fabrics are beautiful um, and you just self bind it 8 inch zips um, match the fabric to the outside for here and clear glass on here so that is going to be a toilet bag right now I have to show you this because it's way too cute not to show you this and this is a pattern from um, New Look I think this is great so this method is brilliant except I'm cheating and making it even easier so this is a wonderful pattern but it's the ruffle I want to teach you so this ruffle on here is not supposed to be like this, but I decided it should be like this because it's sensible. So I've used an overlocker and I've rolled him both sides of my ruffle. You do two buttonholes in the center and roll edge both sides, gather it up and you put it on your top. Then what I do here to make a nice statement down the front is I've got a glue pen and I've just glue penned the back of my braid and I've put my braid on and I've top stitched it okay so that's what I've done on there I'm going to show you the rolled edge and on this one this one my granddaughter Macy helped me embroider on this one and um, we were doing this unicorn and I said, oh, we need to put a pale pink in there. She goes, I can't believe we're doing that. It won't look good. But she didn't realize we're top stitching it and all edge stitching it in purple. And it's come up really nice and she loves it. This one, I did the same. I just glue stitched my braid on and I zigzagged with the same fancy thread. And then I've highlighted it with the hot pink because we didn't have any pale pink. And I have done a twin needle around the hem. And I think that looks really cute. These aren't for the girls this year because they won't fit them. But um, later on they, they can have these. So it's a nice finish. So I'll show you how I did that. So on your overlocker, you put it onto rolled hemming. Now what I've done is three reels of metrosine or whatever. Um, the colour you want to use will be on your blue looper. I'm leaving the white on. And what I've done in the centre is two buttonholes. And I've done them in a bright colour so you can see them. So one side I've already rolled him. So this was 10 inches bigger than the base of the top or the waist of the top. So now I have joined it in a circle and I'm rolled hemming this side. Okay, so it's supposed to be turned under and top stitched. I think that would look really ugly, so I'm rolled hemming it. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull out this iron so I don't trip on it. So all I do is put my machine onto rolled hemming and um, lift the foot up so you've got three threads, the left needle's out, the stitch length's close, the cutting width's close, and the red tension is up a higher number and it's all in your books so now you just roll edge around the top edge like this and it's a very quick easy way to finish a raw edge so it's really good and to clean finish that edge off um, at the beginning and the end you just use fray check. So you just roll edge it and then we just use the straight stitch on the sewing machine and we put it on the longest stitch length that can do and we do two rows of gathering either side of the buttonhole. So you can make this ruffle around a sleeve around the neck, around the waist, anywhere you like, or around the bottom of the top. I think it's very cute. I can't see any boys liking it, or you could do it on the bottom of a skirt, would look really nice on a chiffon, very pretty. 
but it's a nice way of finishing off something. You can let it float because it's all going to be gathered up. So once you've done that, you then <laughs> come to your sewing machine. Oops, sorry. Come to your sewing machine and put your machine on straight stitching. Clear it. Put it on the longest length the machine can do. Start before your vaccine. Make sure you've got both threads. I wouldn't use this thread normally, but I'll just leave it on to show you. Make sure you've got both threads so you've got a tail to pull. You've got to have a tail. And then just use, I'm just doing the foot width because that'll go either side of my buttonhole. And just straight stitch all the way around with a long stitch. So just flatten your fabric out as you go. So you can see I needed to leave my sew table off for this. Makes it easier. So it just goes on either side of the buttonhole there, you can see. Oops, there you go, you can see now. So either side of the buttonhole, this row of stitching is going to go. And always do this row of stitching not the same colour as your garment because you need to see it to pull it out. So don't overlap it, just stop. When you lift it up, make sure you take it out and you want a tail and you need to start with a tail. So now I'm going to do the other side. Make sure that's over that side so you don't get it caught. And I'm just going down the other side. So thread out to the side there. And now I'm going down this side. So when you're cutting it, you don't need to allow for it to be turned under. It can be wide or as narrow as you like. This one is only a sample, so it's not cut perfectly straight, but it's just to show you. So see this row is going on the other side of my buttonhole. So now you can see clearly that it's on both sides of my buttonhole. So when you're doing it on the garment, they need to be exactly the same distance apart. And then for the next step, what you're doing is you're going to be gathering it up. And like I said, it is 10 inches bigger than my garment, my finished garment. So now I've got my two rows of straight stitching all the way through here making a channel. All right. And that channel is what's going to have my ribbon or my cord go through it here. Okay, so that's what the channel's for. So what you do now is you pull up your threads here and then get the other side so you can pull them up nice and evenly. And what I do is I pull up my threads halfway because I've put a halfway mark on and then I pull it up from the other side to the halfway mark. I'm just splitting my threads in two here so I pull the right one. And then just pull them up and gather them up so they're nice and even. Where's my top thread? I want my top thread, not my bobbin thread. Thank you. There we go. So pull them up. Once you've got it going, you're away. One moment, please. Don't know how I pulled my bobbin thread up, but I did. There we go. All right. So there I have it. Now I can pull them nice and evenly. And it's, it's not a big gather because you're only gathering it onto the size of your garment. So what I do is I normally pull it all up and then I ease it back out. Okay, get it nice and even. And then all I did, I lay it onto my garment, made sure my gathers were nice and even, and then you top stitch the two rows on directly onto your garment. So you end up with two rows of stitching and then you pull out your gathering. So the two rows of stitching form your casing and then you're pulling it up. So I think it's a really, really nice finish. And you can see I've teamed this one up with the mauve um, there. And that's what made me do mauve here and the ribbon. And then on here I've done the mauve braid and a darker mauve thread for on there. So it ties it all in. But it's a cute little pattern. So it is a new look pattern. 6649. Now it's for tweens, so it goes from a size 8 
to a size 16. So this won't fit the girls till next year because they're only in size 6, or sometimes size 7 clothes, but by next winter they'll definitely fit those. Okay, so it's a very, very quick and easy thing, but you could um, do this for anything. And make sure that when you do your buttonholes, that you have cut them before you sew them on, so then you can thread your cord through them. All right, so I just thought that would be a nice little add-on to little girls' clothes, and we're all sorted for winter. So I hope there's something in there that's inspired you. Um, remember our CAFE Facet Day, Friday the 26th of August, from 8.30 a.m. till 5 p.m. You can come and Benina New Zealand will be there with the new machines for one day only. But if you do want to pre-order them, you can pre-order them with me now because there's very limited number of the machines coming into the country. So have a really good month and I will see you in August.